Hey everybody, it's Dr. Joe and handsome Mr. Bear. And today I'm gonna to show you general stretches and exercises for the wrist and the hand. This is the seventh video in my 10 day whole body wellness challenge. If you'd like to find out more about it and join in, stick around to the end. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So for this hand and wrist routine, you don't need any equipment. Let's go ahead and get started with the warm up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and then I'll talk you a little bit through everything as we go. So the warm up's gonna be about two minutes. Let's start off with some arm circles. Even though we're doing kind of the wrist and the hands, we wanna make sure all those muscles up and down are getting loosened up. So with these routines, we're gonna do 30 seconds. So we're gonna do it for time instead of repetitions, just so you can kind of go at your own pace. And then between each individual one, there'll be a short break and then between each group of stretches or exercises there'll be a long break. Um, so let's start just doing some wrist flexion and extension getting those muscles kind of loosened up a little bit those flexors and extensors. Um, also, we're gonna start off with some isometric exercises. Isometric exercises are great because they're activating the muscles, but they're not making big movements that sometimes are uncomfortable or painful. So really kind of not pushing as hard as you can because they shouldn't be painful. The goal is to make sure you're getting some muscle activation without any kind of pain. Um, so now let's get those fingers and hands and just kind of do an open and closed jazz hands kind of thing for the warm Warm-ups. Just really go in and, and extend your fingers as much as you can and then come back into a fist just to get those muscles again nice and warmed up. There's no pausing for this. This is um, smoother continuous movement to get those muscles nice and warm. So once we go into those exercises, those muscles aren't cold and, and tight working for those um, open and closing there. And then we'll go back to just some arm circles again, just to get all the muscles going. So again, just nice, some going backwards. They can be small, they can be a little bit bigger. Um, and then going back forwards or clockwise, counterclockwise, what, whatever you'd like to call it. So again, once we get started, uh, we don't need any equipment with these. You can just use your other hand for the pressure and um, some will do together with both hands and some will do individual. So with the first ones, we're with the isometric exercises, since we're gonna use our other hand, we're just gonna do each side. Um, ideally, if you wanna do using the wall or something as your pressure, you could if you wanted to do them together. But in the beginning, you really wanna do each individual because they might be slightly different. So we're gonna go doing flexion first. So I'm just stopping this movement with my hand. So I'm just kind of pushing in. I'm making a fist. If you want to do it this way into wrist flexion, you can. And just kind of pushing only maybe 30 to 40% starting off with these isometric ones. If you've been following along with the challenge, you've probably heard me say it several times already. Um, but just to reiterate, just pushing a little bit until your muscles get used to it. And then um, you can start doing a little bit more as you go. So three to five second hold. 30 to 40% of everything you have right now. And we'll alternate back and forth just to give each side a break. So again, we're doing flexion, going into flexion and just resisting it. So you can have your fingers open if you want to, or if you wanna have a fist and then pushing down. Um, if, you're, if you maybe have some shoulder weakness and tightness as well, you can place your arm on a table. You don't have to hold it up like me, but it's nice to be able to do it this way because then you can do them anywhere. If you're working um, at a computer or something, you can just stop and do it. But if you have your desk there, you can prop your elbow up on it to relax just a little bit. But again, these isometric exercises are really nice because it's starting to get those muscles working, but again, not in that movement that might be a painful movement. So just pushing down, again, that's the motion um, and that three to five second hold. So, you know, if you have something like maybe a, a wrist tendonitis or something like that, again, maybe even 30 to 40% might be a little painful. So you just go at your own pace since this is kind of the beginner exercises, even a 20 to 30% is fine as long as you're getting out of that painful range. So again, just kind of pushing down in that motion. You could also, if you want to, I'm pushing down, having gravity help me, but if you want to turn so you're coming up this way, 
pulling upwards. You could do that way too if that's a little more comfortable for you. I just like it this way. I feel like that's more comfortable for me. Um, but you could even go in this way, you know, if I'm turning my wrist in this way and pushing it. So you can maybe, if, if this is a little bit uncomfortable for you, you can try it in those different directions and see if one way is a little bit more comfortable than the other way. But again, you, you don't want it to be painful. So if one's, one way is painful, try the other way and, and see how that feels. So the next one's just gonna be now wrist extension. So um, you kind of, if you've again been watching and following along with the challenge, you know that we're just kind of working our way around the muscle group of whatever body part we're working on. So again, this is the motion for extension. If you wanna do your fingers open, you can. I'm gonna do a fist with this one because I feel like it's easier. So then just placing my hand up on top, pushing into that hand um, for that three to five second motion. With this one, it might be a little bit easier too if you want to change the position a little bit and then push, but you're not holding resistance through the position. You're here activating the muscles for that three to five seconds. Relax, move it a little bit so you're getting a slightly different angle of the muscles or a length of the muscles and then relaxing. So you could go through that full range that you have. And if you maybe have some wrist issues, maybe even some arthritis, you might not have a big range. So maybe you could even start a down a little bit lower past that neutral position and start here and then work your way to that neutral position. Do that three to five second, come up just a little bit and then push through that way. So if you're here and you only have maybe that much motion but you want to go through those angles, you can start a little lower where those muscles are a little more lengthened um, to get that exercise in there. Again, if it's as long as it's not painful. Uncomfortable is okay. Even just a little bit of pain, as long as the pain stops as, as soon as you stop the exercise, that's okay. You just don't want it to be that sharp, uncomfortable kind of pain. And then again, pushing in three to five seconds, and relaxing. I'll do fingers open this time so you can kind of see. It's, it's a different feeling because those wrist extensors come all the way to the fingers. So when they're curled down, it's a little bit tighter. When they're out, it's, it's not quite as much tension on those extensors. Um, so if you want to try it a couple different ways, again, just giving you those options of things to try. If you've already been working on these and you know what I already say and you don't want to hear it anymore, feel free to click that mute button and listen to some music while you're doing it. I just want to make sure that you know all the options that you can do for these. Because um, again, what works for you might not work for someone else. So I just want to give um, some modifications and different ways to try things. So um, hopefully if one doesn't feel too good for you, the other way will feel a little bit better. and then starting back down a little bit lower and pushing through. So then the next one is gonna be going into what we would call radial deviation. And so radial, the radius on the top side and ulnar are the ulnar deviation on the other side. So we're going up this way into the radial side. So I like to turn my hand up into this position. And so then now I'm just putting my hand here for that resistance and I'm going up into that motion. And again, just kind of holding it for that three to five seconds. Same options here, I'm making the fist. I usually feel like that's a little bit easier for me, but if you wanna have your fingers all the way out, you can do that as well. Um, you can kind of even move the thumb out of the way if you want to. Maybe you have some arthritis in that CMC joint of the thumb. Um, you can do that. But I find having the whole fist makes it a little bit more comfortable for me. And then same thing on the other side. One of the keys, uh, and sometimes I might be getting a little bit out of it because I'm demonstrating to you, but you want your wrist to be in a neutral position, meaning it's kind of in a straight line. You don't want it to be out like this way or in this way to flexion or extension. You want it to be in that neutral plane when you're doing the um, deviations one, radial, radial or ulnar, um, as you're going. You can then come up a little bit and do that, what we've been doing before, but you wanna stay in this plane. You don't want your wrist to be one way or the other. So just a little tip there to keep an eye on, because um, sometimes then that's one, working different muscles, and two, you wanna keep it in that neutral position to keep everything in alignment. So 
keeping an eye on that when you're working on it. And again, if you're at a, a desk maybe, um, and you wanna do these both at the same time, uh, a lot of times you can do some of these against the wall to get resistance, but if you've got your table, you can also put your hands underneath and you're pushing up into the table, as long as the table is sturdy enough and heavy enough where you're pushing into that resistance in there. So if you wanna do them both at the same time and you have something that you can push against or push into, um, that's an option as well if you are trying to get them done a little bit quicker and don't have quite as much time. But I always recommend people do them individually first because you, one, you want to get the correct technique while you're doing it. And two, my right side might be a little bit weaker than my left side. So I might be able to push a little bit more on one side versus the other. And sometimes when you're doing both, it might be hard to regulate how much pressure you're putting on each side. And then so you might end up getting one side more sore because maybe it's a little bit weaker. So if you have the time to do them both individually, I always recommend that. But once you get the technique down and you feel good, if you want to work them both together and you have something solid to push into, that's fine. So then the next one is going to be the ulnar deviation going down towards that ulna side. And so same thing. So now I'm pushing downwards. I can do this way if I want to, or down this way. So whatever's more comfortable for you. Again, I almost feel like going downwards this way is a little bit more comfortable, um, where if I'm pushing down that way, I'm just kind of pushing into my hand over here. I ideally like my arm going straight this way, but if you want to put it in front of you, if this is a little more comfortable, so you're not twisting your upper body as much, that's fine too. Again, just having that wrist in that neutral position, not up this way or not down that way. I'm just pushing down that three to five seconds um, at that 30 to 40 percent of pushing down in there and then relaxing. And then same thing if you prefer having your fingers straight out you know if this is slightly uncomfortable for you you can do that as well um, almost like a chopping down motion and then just pushing down in there that way. And you don't have to have your thumb up like me if you want it down or if you want it up. Again, whatever's most comfortable, just keeping that hand and that wrist in that neutral position and then pushing down. And then again, if you want to start changing the positions of where you push them in, you know, now I'm going down a little bit, I can do that as well. And you can even do the different motions of I'm going down this way, down this way, down this way, or I'm starting up higher, getting one here, getting one here, getting one here. So I'm gonna start a little bit higher up with that one, pushing in for that three to five seconds. Now I'm at neutral, pushing down, and then going a little bit down into that motion and getting that resistance there. and then starting back over. So however you wanna do it again, like I said, is the, the easiest for you or the most comfortable for you. And then you can start building up your pushing. So um, if you've done this a couple times, then you can start increasing your percentage of resistance as well. So if you're doing 30 to 40% now, then next time, 40 to 50, and then working your way up. I wouldn't go too much past maybe like 85% because if you're able to comfortably push as hard as you can at 85%, um, then you're probably ready for some other movements. You're to ready towards the next phase of like the moderate phase of exercises. So the next one, we're gonna go into some stretches. These are gonna be full stretches where you're holding it for 30 seconds, um, really getting those stretches in there. Um, and they should be comfortable, kind of hurts so good, so maybe slightly uncomfortable, little bit of pain, but it's that good stretch pain. So we're gonna do uh, wrist flexors first underneath where we're extending our, our wrist and then just putting a little bit pressure here. And so I'm feeling that stretch underneath right there. Now, if my fingers are up for this one, it's gonna be more of a stretch if that's too much. If I close my fist down, that's gonna take a little pressure off of those and I'm holding that right there like this. I like getting that extra stretch in there with those fingers as well that go all the way through. So just holding that stretch just like that. Um, again, 
trying to be able to hold that 30 seconds fairly comfortably. If you're not able to, then that probably means you're pushing um, just a little bit too hard. So again, up, holding that stretch, getting those wrist flexors underneath, even though your wrist is in extension. A lot of times people get slightly confused with that, but it's a wrist flexor stretch because I'm stretching those flexors underneath. You can also, this is one where if you wanted to stretch them together, you could put your hands against a wall, stand against a wall and do this stretch. Um, but it kind of goes back to the same thing. If they're both equally tight, that's okay. But sometimes one's gonna be a little tighter than the other. Usually your dominant side is a little bit more tighter because you just use it more. Um, but if you feel like you can get a good stretch with both of them after you feel like you know what it's supposed to feel like, that's fine to do both of them at the same time, getting that nice stretch in there. And again, if, you, if that's too much, curl your fingers down for that stretch. And this is a great time just for some of that nice deep diaphragmatic breathing to really help relax those muscles to get a better stretch in there. A lot of times with that diaphragmatic breathing, when you breathe in, as you're breathing out, a lot of times you can push through and get a little bit better stretch. Maybe you can see a little bit on that one. As I, breathe, as I was breathing out, it was helping relax those muscles. So I was able to pull a little bit more on the breathing out. So then the next one is going to be for the wrist extensors. Just where, like I said, we're kind of moving it all the way around, getting it going. So the wrist extensors are on the top up here and go all the way up to the elbow. The flexors go up on the inside of the elbow. The extensors go on the outside. So then it's just the opposite direction. So now I'm going to curl down into flexion to get the wrist extensors. So it's the opposite way now. If my fingers are out, that's a little bit less of a stretch. If I'm not getting a big stretch there, if I curl in my fingers, woo, I feel a really big stretch right there. So that nice 30 second hold, get some of that nice deep breathing in there. And again, once you get these down, if you're comfortable, you can also do these against a wall or something as well where you're pushing in. So you can do them both at the same time. But these are nice, especially if you're at a computer or something, you've been typing a lot all day and your wrists and your fingers and hands are sore, maybe even all the way up to your elbow because all of those are connected um, just to kind of get everything moving there. So again, fingers down is a little bit less. Fingers curled in, I feel that a lot more up there. And then if I give some more pressure, I get a lot there as well. Some people might want to turn it in this way. That's okay. Some people might want to turn it outwards a little bit. That's okay too. But try just the regular position first. And then if you want to try a little bit more after that, you can. So going back in and holding that stretch. Nice deep breath. Letting it out. And see so again, every time I breathe out, I'm just giving a little bit more pressure in there to get a little bit more of a stretch. And I'm kind of crossing my hand over just so you can see what I'm doing. Ideally, you probably want to hold it out in front of you for the stretch this way, but I just want you to kind of be able to get that angle and see what's going on. But you know, don't feel like you're twisting your upper body getting that tired. You know, make sure everything else is in a comfortable neutral position to get that nice stretch. I was starting to feel a little stress on my upper back just being in that turned position. So make sure, again, that you're comfortable. If you're sitting in a chair with a, a back to it or your couch, make sure you're you know supporting your back as well while you're stretching these. 
So then the next one is going to go into the fingers and the hands, and it's kind of a little bit like we did for the warm up, except we're going to do some some more holds with this one. So getting a, not a full thirty second stretch, but maybe like a a little more like a three to five or a five to 10 second stretch with the fingers and the hands. So we can do these together with both hands for this one. We're just opening them up, really just do that like three to five second stretch opening up and then coming back in into that fist and curling them in, really getting a nice squeeze in there. Um, you know, unless your fingernails are really long, you don't want to, to uh, squeeze those fingernails in too hard, but then coming back out that three to five seconds, really kind of spread your fingers out too, almost like they're trying to get away from each other as much as you can, and then curling back in. So a little bit different than what we were doing for the warm up. This is more getting everything kind of stretched out and kind of exercising them as well because you're getting those big squeezes coming in, getting that nice squeeze like I was squeezing something, and then coming out and really just flaring them out as much as you can, getting that nice opening up as much as you can there, and then holding that for that three to five seconds. And then a little pop, you can hear my fingers popping as I come out and then squeezing back in. Do a little wave if you want to, and then nice and squeeze coming back in. So the next one is going to be tendon glides for the fingers. Um, these you can do a couple different ways. I'm just going to kind of go through three different ones, but really kind of gliding those tendons. Sometimes if you have some scar tissue there from a surgery or an injury, gliding these tendons that come through the back of the hands work really well. So again, doing both of them together. First, you're just going to come down and use that close joint, trying to keep the fingers straight if you can, coming back up. These are going to be more of a continuous movement. Now kind of curling the top ones in like this. Sometimes my fingers don't uh, want to do all of the big movements because I've had a surgery on my hand, um, and then curling them all the way back in. So this is kind of a slow and steady continuous motion. It doesn't need to be fast, but you don't necessarily have to hold each position. You're just going slow and controlled into those positions and then coming back, opening up each time. So we did the, now we're just gonna do the curl here, going till you touch, coming back up, now curling them all the way in, and then coming back up. So see, you're kind of gliding those tendons through your hand. And I can feel that on the back of my hands and my fingers as I curl them in. So if you've got an injury or some scar tissue and you've been cleared by your doctor or therapist to do these, these are sometimes really nice to get those tendons gliding in there. So then the next one, we're going to do some stuff that's kind of up at the elbow area because a lot of those wrist muscles come up and attach to the elbow. So the next one is just going to be a simple bicep curl. We're going to do these together again just because it's kind of easy to do these when you're not using weights. It's usually not much of a difference. Palm either up or fist, and you're just going to come up into that curl and then come straight back down. You can do, again, with the palm facing outwards, or if you want to turn your thumb in, it changes a little bit, um, kind of like hammer curls if you like to work out in the gym. So maybe if you want to even alternate them back and forth just to get the different um, parts of the biceps, um, you can do those both ways. But just, again, a nice smooth motion when you're not using any resistance or weights, you can still get a workout doing this. If you're doing that controlled motion, making those muscles do the work, you don't have to have 15, 20 pounds while you're doing it. You know, I'm feeling my muscles working. So if you're doing this for general wellness, or even if you're doing this because maybe you have some arthritis or a small injury that you've been cleared to do some exercises, even without resistance or weight, you're really going to feel that. And um, I, I can feel those working without having any kind of resistance on there. So then the next one is just going to be a, a tricep uh, 
push back. So that's, you know, we're just kind of alternating now. We're going into the triceps. You can do these stand into, standing to or leaned over, but since we're sitting, we'll just kind of stay where we are. Um, but this one, you're just going to kind of have your um, elbows back behind you. If you want to lean forward a little bit, you can. And all you're doing, we're doing both of them again, just kind of pushing back, straightening out that arm, bending, but keeping the top part of your arm and that elbow in the same spot. You're just moving below that elbow. So everything else is kind of staying in place. I'm getting that nice stretch right there and then coming in. So again, either you can do your fists, making fists, um, so you can get that little extra squeeze in there, or just have your fingers out and getting that movement. And again, I have no resistance, but I can feel those muscles working because I'm controlling it. When I get to the end, I'm giving that little extra push and that squeeze at the end to get those exercises, um, to get those muscles working with those exercises. So, you know, unless you're really in training and trying to bulk up those muscles, if you're just trying to work the muscles or if you're trying to retrain muscles after an injury, it doesn't have to be a lot of weight. It just has to be correct form and having to do things more for quality instead of quantity. So make sure you're doing it correctly first, and then if they become really easy, you can start adding on weights. So there you have it. Those were general stretches and exercises for the wrist and the hand. This was the seventh video of my 10 day whole body wellness challenge. If you've missed some of the other videos for it, make sure and click on the playlist up there. And if you're interested in finding out more and joining in, click on the link in the description below. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.